Hello, my name is Natalie Berg. I'm the Global Research Director at Planet Retail. And joining me here today is Sir Ian Cheshire, who's the CEO of Kingfisher and the chairman of the BRC. So thank you very much, Ian, Pleasure for right. taking the time. Um, so I guess to kick things off, the theme of the conference mm -hmm. has been disruption. Yeah. Um, so there's various elements of this, ranging from the convergence of online and offline mm -hmm. to the rise of the discounters. Yeah. So I guess my question to you would be, what do you see as, as the biggest disruptors in retail, and, and is this actually an opportunity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's two different timescales interacting here in a quite interesting way. The, f the first one is the, the internet is probably still the biggest single disruptor because technology is now in the hands of consumers at a scale that just hasn't been there before and at a capability that was just unimaginable 10 years ago. Yeah. And a lot of business models are scrambling to catch up with the way it's put more power in the customers' hands than the retailers and, and challenge a lot of business models. So I think that's, particularly mobile internet has changed the game. But secondly, and in most of Europe, I think we're seeing this, this the rise of the discount and the polarization of markets has, I think, also un undermined quite a lot of the old traditional business models. And the big challenge for legacy retailers is that you're stuck with legacy systems, legacy leases in particular, mm. which are moving much more slowly than your competitive set and the technology. So retailers are somewhat, I think, on the back foot at the moment. And maybe the opportunity now is to be in amongst the disruptors and rethink the business model because you know that the, the one that might have served you for the last 20 years is probably not going to work for the next 20. Yeah, yeah. And I think you touched on a point around the consumer and mm -hmm. the general acceptance around discount shopping nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we see it as habits that were learned during the recession are now firmly entrenched and people are, are really, you know, happy to shout around for a bargain mm. and, and shop around as well. Um, how is that impacting your business and how, how can you adapt to um, cater to today's modern shopper? Well, I think it plays out in different parts of retail differently. For us in DIY Home Improvement, what we've mm -hmm. had to focus on is really two things. Firstly, the opening price point level. So you've got to be at the entry level pricing, absolutely razor sharp. And yeah. that's where you have to up your game on sourcing, think about your product ranges. But that's where you're going to get attacked by the discounters. It's mm. not so much a prime sort of mid-upper brand level issue. Yeah. So we don't worry so much about you know a DeWalt power tool being discounted, but but certainly a sort of entry level power tool. We have to have a competitive offer there. Yeah. Secondly, I think you have to wrap service around the rest of your proposition. So what can you do for a customer that a discounter can't? And particularly in home mm. improvement, they typically can't do the whole project for a, for a room. So what yeah. we need to do is make it easier for our customers to get the whole project under one roof and shop across the store. And if we do that better, that's a tough thing for a discounter to match. Yeah, and I think not only just um, differentiating from the discounters, mm. but also online, yeah. you know, retailers um, using their bricks and mortar mm -hmm. stores are increasingly um, looking to become, uh, you know, different, you offer something different yeah. to what you can get online. So um, how do you see that changing? And, you know, are you focusing more on, say, exclusive products mm -hmm. or in-store services? Or what sort of advice would, yeah, you, I mean, would you give? And again, this, is, this plays out differently. What we've seen mm -hmm. is two important trends, one of which is exclusive product absolutely is going to be the key. Mm. I think if all you're doing is retailing other people's brands, that's a tough uh, long-term margin game to be in. So you've yeah. got to create your own product. Secondly, I think people are looking for more in the way of help, uh, advice, demonstration, try before you buy. Yeah. And a lot of product categories, you really do need to see and touch it. So the question mm. there is, for example, how do you sell paint in the digital world? You can have all sorts of clever, you know, visualizing techniques. Actually, mm. people don't trust it until they put it on the wall and they want to see the product. So I think working out what the stores are for that the internet can't do, and then what the internet can add to the stores and help drive traffic to the stores, but it all starts with, well, what's the customer trying to do, and therefore, mm. what's the best tool for the job? Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you very much for your time.